person. As I have mentioned before, I, my magnus opus will be out in October, but just around the corner. It is entitled Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. Who did it, how they did it, what they plan, what we can do to stop them. And I will send you a free copy the minute it's out. It's out. Please stay on the line. We'll get your name, and we will send you one when it, when it arrives in the warehouse. And the rest of you, if you want to get a, your, your mitts on a first printing, please go to Amazon.com and grab a copy before it's out in the bookstores. It'll probably be the second printing at that point. That brings us to 16, 17 minutes after the hour. Time for another song and another call in a minute. Is it, yeah, it's one seventeen. It's early yet. I'm 117 on the West. I keep saying it's, it's all around the world because people listen in Dubai and Israel, Australia. I have a psychic who listens to me in Australia and sends me letters now, what she predicts for me. Did I tell you I went to a psychic today? I know you don't believe, many of you don't believe in any of that. I do. I mean, I pray to God and nothing happens a lot of the time. In fact, the psychic who's uh, said to me, how's your relationship with Creator? And she didn't say the Creator, she said Creator. She said, how is your relationship with Creator? You know what I answered? I thought for a moment, and I said very much like that of Mother Teresa. Sometimes he hears me, sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes I know he's ever present, and sometimes I don't know if he exists. And she went, hmm. It was very interesting. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So where do you want me to go with the show right now? At the bottom of the hour, we have the San Francisco Chronicle uh, journalist on. Phil Matera about why Willie Brown took on a high-profile domestic violence case. It's beyond comprehension. On tape, a guy is seen beating his girlfriend, and the lawyers get the tape thrown out, saying that the police didn't have a warrant. I Meanwhile, the prosecutors argued that the guy who did it could have erased the video had police waited to obtain a warrant. Doesn't that make sense? Well, it would if you didn't live in San Francisco. It's one cozy little family. All at the opera with uh, gowns by uh, Esca de la Renta. All wearing demented floral gowns that are not made for a girl over 13. It's unbelievable to me. Women 50, 60, floral gowns they're wearing now. Made for girls 14 years old who are anorexic. You got these hags wearing them. I, I never saw anything. It looked like they pulled drapes off the wall. Like they pulled the curtains at Eloise Valencia from Queens and bought them on eBay. Authentic curtains from Queens, New York, 1950s, would make excellent gowns for women in San Francisco at the opera opening on eBay. Buy it by the yard. And put a name on it, Oscar de la Yenta. Oh, yes, it's nice living in this house. If you don't have a sense of humor, it's, it's kind of eat your heart out. But if you laugh at it and see it for what it is, it's a comic strip. Except people are dying, getting beaten up. You know, it's the second high-profile wife abuse case where this high-profile individual walked. The other guy's still a sheriff. How do they get away with it? I thought that they're for women. Where are the women, women's rights group in San Francisco? That's a laugh. That's a, that's a real laugh. Women's rights groups in San Francisco. Have they said one word about the rapes, the murders, the kidnappings, the sale on slave blocks of Christian and Yazidi women? There are no women's rights groups. They're special rights groups under the guise of women rights groups, the same as all the other left-wing fanatics. I don't know if I even want to talk about this now. I think I'll do a Bernie Sanders for a minute. I tried it yesterday. I don't have the time to do it. Play any Bernie Sanders. I'll try to mock him. That's all. Give me a Bernie. My view, it would be hard, hard. for anyone in this room today to make the case that the United States of America, our great we go country, again. a country which all yeah, of us love. You don't love anything, you lousy communist atheist bum. That we are a just society. You liar, you. anything resembling you a sick just thing, you. society today. You're a filthy communist. In the United States of America today. Listen to the bashing. There is massive injustice. You in lying terms piece of, of garbage. income and wealth inequality. 
Injustice is rampant. See, this is the kind of crap your children have to listen to on campuses across America because the fifth-rate intellectuals have no competition and the kids are scared of them. Now you're seeing it nakedly exposed by this street uh, agitator, Bernie Sanders. Massive income inequality. 50% of the bums don't work. The whole world's rushing to get in here and there's income inequality. Where do you think the money comes from, you lousy liar, you? It comes from hardworking men like Michael Savage, not like failures like you who can only go into government. Failures like you go into government because you don't have the brains or the guts to make it anywhere else, Bernie. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Now we turn to the one-party system of California, especially San Francisco. I saw an article the other day in San Francisco by Phil Mateo, why Willie Brown took on a high-profile domestic violence case. And it was about a guy who I never heard of who beat 45 felony domestic violence charges in San Francisco after he allegedly punched his girlfriend a 100 times over half an hour in his Rincon Hill penthouse, all recorded by in-home security cameras. The rest, by the way, would take a Hollywood movie to describe how this guy walked. And Phil Mateo wrote the story. He uh, is now join us, joining us on the Savage Nation. Phil, thank you for writing a story like this. I was shocked it got published locally. How did, how did you even get it published? Let, let's start with something right off the top, Michael. We're going to have to credit also, I want to call credit Jeff Elder at the Wall Street Journal, who went down and dug through some emails in some court filings and some obscure court filings, because this story is bigger than just Willie Brown, okay? You're hitting the nail on the head as far as the one-party system. What we have here is a young tech millionaire, multi-millionaire, mega-millionaire, who's heading up an ad tech company called Radium One. And they're about to do that thing called IPOs, which usually means boatloads of money coming in, independent, I mean, stock option sales. Right, but right, right. he gets into this jam. Now, on the board with him, Steve Wesley, another mega millionaire, who also happened to run and win the job of being California state controller. He's on the board with Radium One, and from what the Wall Street Journal pulled up and we were able to confirm he calls willie brown after this happened says look this could jeopardize a lot of things this young man's future but also possibly the stock option what can you do to help okay so willie brown wants a million dollar retainer what happens next well, willie brown according to willie brown says yeah it's going to take at least a million dollars because this is a complicated case and it's an unsavory case and uh willie brown is an attorney and he puts together a legal team. He puts together a legal team to explore all the aspects of it. So the million dollars is, he takes 250000 up front, mm -hmm. together a legal team to explore all the aspects of it. And Wesley seems to think that he's also going to get the DA to back down. That Willie Brown's influence is big enough that he's going to be able to grease the skids to get the district attorney to back down. Obviously, the guy didn't know either Willie Brown, who wouldn't necessarily cross any line, as you know. He's not going to cross any line that gets him personally in trouble. And he doesn't know George Gascon because George Gascon and Willie Brown don't get along. And George Gascon wasn't going to toss 45 felony charges of domestic violence for anybody, because one, it would be wrong, and two, it would cost him his, his election. Especially right, so given that what you say is true, and I don't know that it's 100% true, how in the world can the defense throw out the video footage of this man allegedly beating his girlfriend, saying that the police seized it without a warrant, when we all know that had they waited for a warrant and gone to this corrupt court system, that tape would have been erased anyway, right? Yeah. Now, that is the that is what this thing hangs on and that's what when the, we first got this story and we were first covering it that was what the, everybody was wondering and screaming about was how can a tape how do we have a legal system that says <laughs> it's illegal for you to take a tape for the officers <laughs> to take a tape that could wind up getting erased but you've nailed it on the head that is our court system that sits around and says what you can't believe it's true and that swung them down and then the girlfriend didn't testify so they've gotten all the what? Well, well, let me ask you this. Here's, here's what's, what's troubling. Many people are emailing me and say, saying this. If a cop walks from a case, the Federal Justice Department moves in and files the case again on a federal level. Why have we not seen any interest on a federal level 
Is it because it's all one Democrat machine? I mean, honestly. Well, I, I, politics of it go, let's look at the obvious. When do they decide to go in and do a federal investigation? When? I don't know. Yes, you do. I don't know. You tell me when. When? When it's a white cop? When it's politically... Whenever it's a white... When it's a white cop, I think that the Justice Department just suddenly moves into action. In this case, they decided they don't see it as uh, a, a, a misrepresentation of justice because the judge threw it out. Now, possibly if the judge had kept it in, I don't know. Those are the politics that you speak of, not me. But yes... It's one of those things that's a head-scratcher. So anyway, the guy winds up getting fired later on anyway. Willie Brown returns all but 50000 of it. I asked him, why would you do this? And he said... Yeah, well, let's, let, let's forget Willie Brown for a minute. He's smart enough to know how to play the game no matter what happens. So good for him. The case is not about Willie Brown. It's about the guy who allegedly beat the girl. How come she didn't testify, Phil? I, do, I can't say for sure. You know, Michael, that is one of those things that in domestic violence cases, they don't even let you know the name of the person. Okay, that's to protect their privacy. Is that true? No one even knows who she is? Right. We, that's, now, the prosecutors know who she is. The defense know who she is. But her name is not made public. And you, you ask for a domestic violence report, you're not going to get the names. You just Wow. Okay. That's interesting. Oh, so, how did you, you know? It's a, it's it's interesting to me. Come on, Phil. You live in the same city I do. Here is the second high-profile domestic violence case from a high-ranked individual where the guy walks. Look at the sheriff, Murky Kami. He's he's a sheriff after such a, a similar situation. How is that possible? Where are the women's groups screaming about it? Phil. The women's groups were screaming about Mercurimi, and his case, to be honest, wasn't even close to this. We're talking about an arm grab versus this, okay? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. His wasn't, and the women's group did scream, and he was tossed out of, he was suspended by the mayor, and he did plead guilty, and the mayor said, I want you out of that job, but the board of supervisors kept him in, mm. and in part possibly because they agreed with his progressive politics, but whatever the case, mm -hmm. the mayor was overstepping his bounds, and he stayed in, just like the the judge okay. decided that the cops had overstepped their bounds in this case. Does it? Who is the judge? How could a judge throw these tapes out with a straight face and get away with it? Who is Brendan Conroy? Yeah, Brendan Conroy, he's uh, been around for a lo long time. Pretty relaxed guy. Not a firebrand on any side one way or the other. And on that question, I think you're going to have to get a lawyer to answer because I think it happens other places as well as here. How many times are we reporting things that you say, that looks like a slam dunk, and all of a sudden it goes away once you, leave, once you go into the courtroom? It's, that's what well, it is. Well, usually in a case like this where there's such an egregious miscarriage of justice, you wouldn't have written the article. The Wall Street Journal wouldn't have written about it if it wasn't so egregious. Aren't there usually a follow-up case where they, they say something's wrong and they retry the case? Who would that be? Who would retry it? The state? The feds? Who would do it? It would be the state or the feds, but as far as I know, no one's asked and no one's offered. Yeah, no, no. Uh, Willie, come on, please. This machine is so solid and there's no opposition party. So this is over. It's done. And that's the end of it. So in San Francisco, you can beat your wife and get away with it if you know the right attorney and judge. That's all. What can I say? Phil, look, all i got to say is it's an interesting article. I never thought it would appear in the, in the SF uh, Chronicle, but uh, it did. And uh, I, I personally was very interested because I thought it was so amazing to see a girl beaten so badly, allegedly, a hundred times, and the guy who does it gets away with it. It's unbelievable to me. You know something? I'm not going to argue, but i got to go and get back to work. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, in other words, he didn't want to say any more for fear of uh, upsetting the uh, apple cart here in San Francisco. All right, as you would expect, he covered his basis with all of his friends. And uh, that's to be expected. He's got to watch out for his back end. And everyone does. One hand washes the other. He doesn't want to burn his bridges with uh, all of the players. And that's San Francisco for you. I guess the only reward now is for the former state controller who uh, was a board member of Radium One and a friend of Shalal uh, will now be the governor. That's how you rise in San Francisco. The bigger the crime, the bigger the... Uh... You know, I was thinking about a new slogan. Donald Trump's slogan is make America great again, right? Is that what he says in his hats? Make America great again? I think Bernie Sanders should put out a hat that says make America hate again. I just sent that to Donald, and I said, please use that in your campaign uh, speeches from now on. Because everything that comes out of Bernie Sanders' mouth is about making America hate again. Everything. He stirs up hatred against the middle class and makes believe he isn't doing it. 
And it's good. It's good to see this man doing